Hey, Brainiacs! Check out our cool new Weather Explorer truck. It's super heavy and extra tough, so it can handle extreme conditions and lots of different types of weather, like rain, snow, thunderstorms, and even tornadoes. Have you ever wondered what causes all of these different weather patterns? Before we learn how weather works, we need to know what matter is. Welcome back to Brain Candy TV. Everything you see around you is made of matter. Our weather explorer truck, the trees, the ground, and even things we can't see, like the air we breathe. It's all made of matter. Matter is made up of lots of really tiny things called atoms that are too small to see with our eyes. The three most common types of matter that we experience every day are solid, liquid, and gas. Atoms are always moving. When atoms are just moving a little bit, but are held firmly in place, we call that type of matter a solid. Since the atoms are held tightly together, a solid has a definite shape and a definite volume. Like these blocks of ice. When atoms are heated up, they move around faster and can start to slip and slide around each other. This turns the solid into a liquid. A liquid's shape will change to match its container, but the amount of space it takes up also called its volume, doesn't change. The water in these puddles is an example of a liquid. When the atoms of a liquid are heated up even more, they start to fly away from each other and spread out. When the atoms can fly around freely, this is called a gas. A gas does not have a definite shape or a definite volume. A gas will fly around and fill whatever container it is in, like the water vapor in this fog. Most gases have atoms that are so far apart that we can't even see them, like the air we breathe. Even though we can't see the air, we can feel it on our skin and see it wiggle the branches of the trees when the wind blows. But what causes the wind? Remember that when atoms heat up, they start to move faster and spread farther apart. When the sun shines on one side of the Earth, it heats up the atoms in the air, which makes them spread out. This makes the air lighter, so it starts to rise higher into the atmosphere. It's just like when the burners of a hot air balloon heat the air inside the big colorful envelope. The hot air atoms get more spread out, which makes the hot air lighter than the colder air around it. So the hot air floats up into the sky. When the hot air on the sunny side of the Earth rises up into the atmosphere, cooler air from the surrounding area rushes in to take its place. As the Earth spins, the rising of the hot air on the sunny part of the Earth and the rushing in of the cooler air is what causes most of the wind to blow. Did you ever wonder how clouds are made and how they get way up into the sky? We see clouds come and go, but how did they get there? When liquid water is warmed up, some of the atoms fly away in the form of an invisible gas called water vapor. This process of changing from a liquid to a gas is called evaporation. All right, Lizzie, let's activate our Weather Explorer's flight mode and check out those clouds up close. As the invisible water vapor floats higher and higher, the air gets colder and thinner. This cold, low-pressure air turns the water vapor gas back into tiny drops of liquid water or ice that stick to little bits of dust floating in the air. 
When lots of these tiny droplets of water form at the same time, they make a cloud. This process of changing from a gas to a liquid is called condensation. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to fly up through a cloud? Let's try it! Whoa! That was so cool! Isn't it beautiful up here? No matter how dark and dreary it gets on a cloudy day, it's always nice and sunny up above the clouds. Sometimes, when the air is just right, a cloud can form at ground level instead of up in the sky. When a cloud forms at ground level, it's called fog. So if you take a drive on a foggy day, it's kind of like you're driving right through the middle of a cloud. Cool! Stay tuned! We'll be back after these messages. When the tiny water droplets in the cloud clump together and get bigger and heavier, they will fall back to the ground. Do you know what these falling water drops are called? That's right! It's rain! The rain falls back to the ground or into the lakes and oceans. When rain falls down to the ground, we call that process precipitation. When the clouds go away and the sun comes out, the water starts to evaporate again and the whole process starts over. This process of repeating evaporation, condensation and precipitation is called the water cycle. If the air is extra cold when a cloud forms, the water vapor will turn into little solid ice crystals instead of water droplets. What do you think it's called when these ice crystals are heavy enough to fall down to the ground? That's right! That's how snow is made! Since snow is a solid, it can build up on the ground and stay there for a long time. It's a good thing our weather explorer truck has big snow tires, so it can easily drive through the deep snow. The air gets colder as you go higher up in the sky. That's why you'll often see snow on the tops of mountains. It's really cold at the top of this mountain. Look at all that snow. Sometimes, when the temperature changes quickly, big heavy clouds and strong winds are created. These are the right conditions to make a thunderstorm. Have you ever rubbed your shoes on the carpet and then got a little shock when you touched the doorknob? The rubbing action creates a static electrical charge in your body. And when you touch the metal doorknob, the electrical charge jumps from your finger to the metal doorknob, since the metal is good at conducting electricity. Lightning works the same way, but on a much bigger scale. When storm clouds get whipped up by strong winds, little particles of rain, snow and ice will rub against each other, and this creates a static electrical charge. Often, the bottom of a cloud becomes negatively charged, and the ground below becomes positively charged. These positive charges and negative charges are attracted to each other, like magnets. But they're very far apart, so they can't reach each other. But when the electrical charges become really strong, they can jump large distances between clouds or even all the way to the ground. When this happens, it creates a lightning bolt. When a big lightning bolt shoots across the sky, 
It instantly heats the surrounding air to around 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This makes the air around the lightning expand very quickly, creating a shock wave and a loud bang. Then, the air cools quickly and squeezes back into place, which makes a long rumbling sound. These loud noises caused by the expanding and contracting air is called thunder. If you watch a thunderstorm from your window, you might notice that the sound usually comes much later than the lightning bolt. That's because light travels almost a million times faster than sound. That's like comparing the speed of this snail that only moves one millimeter every second to the fastest jet in the world, which can fly at almost one kilometer per second. So even if the lightning bolt is really far away, we can see its light almost immediately. But it takes around five seconds for the sound to travel one mile, or three seconds to travel one kilometer. So if you hear thunder five seconds after seeing a lightning strike, that means the lightning is around one mile away. Let's count the seconds to see how far away the lightning is. One, two, three, four, five. The sound from the lightning strike took five seconds to get to us. So it was one mile away. Let's time the next one. One, two, three. That time the thunder only took two and a half seconds. So the lightning was only half a mile away. Sometimes, when there's a really big storm called a supercell, it can create very strong rotating winds that spiral up into the air. This is called a mesocyclone. If the storm also has extra heavy rainfall, the rain can drag the mesocyclone all the way down to the ground. And that's how we get a tornado. Tornadoes have dangerous winds that can move up to 300 miles per hour. That's as fast as the fastest hypercar in the world. This is what 300 miles per hour looks like. Tornadoes have some super fast winds. Tornadoes are very dangerous, so if you ever see a tornado, make sure you get somewhere safe as soon as possible. Luckily, all of the people and animals from this farm have already left town to stay safe from the tornado. In fact, even though our weather explorer is really tough, maybe we should get out of here too. Come on, Lizzie, let's get out of here. Whoa, keep it steady, Lizzie. Those winds from the tornado are super strong. Ah, that's better. The weather is much nicer over here. Isn't weather fascinating? I hope you enjoyed learning about weather with us, Brainiacs. Thanks to all of our amazing Patreon patrons for your support of our show. Special thanks to our new Super Brainiacs. Sawyer and Nate, Liam Corion, Gennaro, Aaron, Torin, Anthony and Eden, David Lee Barr, Finley Wilder, Tyler and Bennett, Quinn and Augie, Ryan and Hayden, Hunter, Xavier, Jonah, March, Gabe and Freya, Micah, John the Fourth and Robin, Lenny F, Adriana and Connor, Weston, Nick Davin, Jack, and Yuvi and Yash. As well as our new fire truck level brainiacs. Theo, Lila, Eli, Noel, and Violet. Evangeline, Dylan and Kensley. Easton, Joshua S. Ellis, 
Joshua and Hazel, Olivia Gonzalez, Miles, Derek C, Zedekus, Jude, PJ and Olivia, Connor and Corey, Milo and Emmett, Wyatt, Ethan, Kian and Remy, Max, Alexander Orion, and Elise, James, and Davis. You're awesome! Hey parents, if you'd like to see your child's name in the credits and other fun perks, please check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash braincandytv. Thanks so much for your support. It really means a lot. Thanks for watching, Brainiacs. See you next time. <laughs>